Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to today's uh, final day of the Moodle MOOC, Moodle MOOC uh, 2 on Wiz IQ. My name is Nellie Deutsch, and I'm going to introduce our speaker, and then you'll see uh, our speaker's name. All right, so uh, let's get started. If you could just add the chat box where you're from. Today's session is called Expanding Learning Through Interactive Storytelling and Out of Time. You'll learn more about that as we go. Our speaker is Robin Stevens Pays. And uh, you'll find this really interesting. Robin writes often about notice health, research, science, and psychology for the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Okay, NIDA award winning cerebellum blog and other notice NIDA and NIH publications on neuroscience of addiction. Now, I think this is very, very relevant since we're not only talking about drugs, but we're talking about addiction. She was founding editor in chief of Learn Now, the web portal, introducing parents and educators to the science of learning. So now, I think you'll be getting the connections. Um, Robin most recently wrote for the Dana Foundation blog about teen learning, about drug abuse through social media, based on a case study about the Cerebellum blog published in February of 2013 in the Journal of Social Marketing. So if you'd like to look that up, you can first of all Google Robin Stephen Pays, and you can also uh, get the journal. She's the founder and principal of Words Work Communications. This is a social marketing firm uh, applying cutting-edge communications to bring research to life. And I think there is so much uh, that Robin Stevens Pays can teach us because bringing not only research but learning to life is really, really important. So uh, I'm going to pass on the mic to our speaker, who is currently, well, is our speaker here? Well, I see that we've got WizIQ, so let me just uh, pause the recording so that uh, this doesn't go on record. Okay, so that uh, we can, okay, so this is just, um, Maybe I shouldn't screen share. Maybe it's going to freeze my system. Hmm. Okay, here I am. I'm screen sharing. I'm on a Mac, and in order to screen share on a Mac, you have to go through a whole process. Macs want to protect us. Okay, that's what's great about Macs on the one hand. On the other hand, this overprotection is not always a good thing, I don't think. But here it is. This is the uh, the link, okay, that um, Robin wanted to share, okay? So here it is. Isn't that a beautiful image? I think that's just beautiful. Okay, so there's, um, it's all about tweeting. Jump out of the time, okay? So this looks like a beautiful blog, okay? So um, you can access that later on looks fascinating okay and we'll go back to class stop screen sharing so there you t you had a look at uh, a little bit uh, we found Thanks. your we found your uh, bio fascinating so there we are i just started the recording good to see you Yeah, I'm going to extend the class. I'm going to extend the class anyway, so that's fine. So take your time.
Yes, yes, you're doing great and you sound and look wonderful.
Oh, thank you so much. Okay, and, and uh, I control it with this arrow. I'm sorry for asking technical questions and eating into the time. This arrow is going to help me go next or back, right? Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone for um, bearing with me here. Um, as I said, time travel is never easy, even when it's virtual. So, um, uh, Nellie, I, I don't know, you, you gave a little intro, I guess, and um, I, I didn't get to hear it, but thank you for, for doing that, and thanks everyone for um, joining me. I'm really excited about talking to you, and I've never done a MOOC before, so this is a good experience uh, in, in presenting in, an, in another storytelling platform, potentially. So should I just get started? Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, um, I'm Robin, and I appreciate your all being here, and I, I'm really looking forward to talking with everyone, and I hope you will um, talk back to me, because I'd really like your feedback. I hope we can learn together. This is really about a project that I've been passionate about um, and working on for over 15 years now, believe it or not, uh, with a few hiatuses in between for um, technology to catch up with my uh, protagonist's desire to travel back in time to meet her Florentine idol, Leonardo da Vinci. Um, she is fascinated with all things Renaissance and particularly Leonardo because she is a modern girl living today and she wants to be herself a Leonardo in our time. And part of the question is, is could any young person, could any teenager aspire to be that today? So let me just tell you a little bit about what I hope to get through and um, how this should go. And again, I hope people will um, chime in with questions and suggestions and comments as we go. And maybe, Nellie, you can help me direct that flow, because I can't really watch the chat that's going on at the same time. But the things that I'd like to go over, a little background about Out of Time and how this got to be first a screenplay and now a uh, live interactive storytelling venture on Twitter. Um, a little bit of background based on my own fascination with the science of learning and the science of storytelling, which, believe it or not, storytelling science is kind of an emerging field. It's, it's not, uh, there are a lot of theories. It's not certain yet, but we are um, watching this evidence to see how people's brains resonate on story and how story really touches us and allows us to learn at a deeper level. So I'll go into that a little bit. Um, the idea of interactive storytelling on Twitter, and if you um, have looked at Out of Time Media on Twitter um, today or any day in the past three months, you'll see that my protagonist, Charlie, is tweeting about a variety of subjects that are near and dear to her heart. And uh, we will go over that a little bit and how you can jump in, which I hope people will feel free to follow and really help us direct this story, this out of time adventure on Twitter. So, um, and then the, the further thing, the, the last thing I'd like to go on, over is um, a website that is just going up this afternoon at outoftimemedia.com where um, we will be putting together kind of a platform for learning in a variety of ways. So all of this put together plus the fact that I'm working on a novel or as um, I heard Elizabeth Gilbert, the author of um, Eat, Pray, Love say last week, the novelization of my screenplay for a young adult adventure. Um, so multiple ways of using this and I'm, I'm very excited to see how it works across media. So transmedia storytelling is kind of new and emerging, and I think it's something of interest to educators as well as a tool for students to learn how to tell their story on multiple platforms. And as I'm finding firsthand, um, the story plays out very differently depending on where you're telling it. So those are the kinds of things I want to go over today. Um, at heart, you should know I'm very much of a writer and a creative person. Um, sometimes I uh, get carried away with create the creative ideas and I have to kind of rein myself in so I have this tension with the science and the story um, kind of battling for dominance in my my heart and soul and um, I, I so I'm always looking for evidence to undergird what I'm saying but I um, would like to hear what all of you think about all of this and how to uh, how to get the story told and and spread and getting people involved in it. 
So with that said, I will, ah, it works, yes. So Matt Wiener is, a, is the creator, one of the creators of Mad Men, the wildly popular television series about Madison Avenue and advertising in New York in the 50s, 60s, 1950s, 60s, and 70s. He said in an interview recently, we think history is acted out by other people. But these are people having interactions just like us. So that, to me, really encapsulates the way history for me resonates. And I hope for a lot of other people, by putting yourself into the story and by making the story alive today, it becomes much more uh, resonant and a good vehicle for learning, teaching, and just really um, getting engaged with um, what is happening in any given time and space. And that is really a premise behind Out of Time, the, the screenplay, and all the other emergent stories that I'm putting together. So um, in my mind, it's about exercising the heart and the mind together. So learning is not just about expanding the brain. And for me, it all began once upon a time, just really quickly. Um, I don't know if people read the description of uh, uh, that was on the, on the page you put up, Nellie, but uh, I started writing the screenplay when my, my kids were actually preteen. They're all in their 20s now, uh, so it's taken a long time to bring to life. But um, I was a carpooling mom and listening to the backseat conversations on the way to soccer practice and, and band practice, and it was all about hating their, their teachers or their parents or loving their friends and who did what to whom and who said what today, and I just found it was a whole engaging world that I didn't have the same perspective on when I was a teen myself, because of course there's a lot of angst involved when you're in that realm, but when you're observing it as a parent and um, a scientist, if I may say so, uh, it, it comes across quite differently. And so one of the um, things that was interesting to me is they were talking about their superheroes and sports heroes, celebrities who are kind of heroes of another sort. But if you would think about who the heroes who've inspired history are, you know, maybe we think of um, Churchill or we think of Roosevelt or we think of... Um, any of the any of the names in the history books, um, would you want to meet them personally? And how would you engage with them virtually in a meaningful way? Not just to learn the facts, but to really get into the ideas and the um, heads of, of the people who live in that time. Because it's not all about the heroes, it's also about the people like us who are uh, not the leaders in our time, but but certainly living through winter times. And what do, what is that all about? What is that like? So, um, so those were some of the questions that came to mind uh, when I was writing this. And I took a little hiatus because uh, I'm losing the page here. Um, here's what the screenplay looks like. And of course, it's already written, uh, but it took 15 years and the discovery of things like the Higgs boson and the neutrino for me to, Charlie, figure out, solve the problem or the riddle of time travel, how she could go back five centuries to meet her Florentine idol. Um, it took Facebook and iPod and, uh, and iPhones to be able to do it. And then when that all came together about a year ago was when I could go back to this story after putting it away for 10 years, really. Um, to let the science and technology catch up to really make this a plausible kind of adventure. So the other um, aspect of this is once that story, that screen written, uh, and, and of course, obviously, it's not a movie yet. Um, but those characters didn't want to stay in the page. They were so alive and engaging that they wanted to go public. And um, so how would they evolve into real life characters? And so that's when the idea of putting a, a tweet storytelling interface on Twitter came up. And the interesting thing about this is that a lot of people today are, uh, there's a hashtag if you are a Twitter person, um, hashtag is that pound sign and it, it allows you to see what other people are talking about that you're interested in and follow what they're saying in conversations on Twitter. Um, Twitter fiction is now a hashtag, and a lot of people are tweeting out their novels one line at a time, which is really how I started tweeting out of time movie, at out of time movie. Um, 
unfortunately, one line at a time, it would take 15 years to tweet the story. And it probably wouldn't be too interesting to people who were just following along casually. So as it turns out, Charlie Morton, who is the protagonist of this uh, screenplay, took over and began tweeting herself. And you'll see that if you go to add out of time movie on Twitter. And um, what we found out, Charlie and I, is that it's much more interesting when people tweet to her, ask her questions, and help guide the story. So instead of this becoming um, my giving out the storyline for the movie one line at a time, this is a really open-ended uh, forum for people to ask questions about what Charlie's experiencing um, and how she's going to get there, and actually offering help uh, in the process. And so uh, it's become quite interactive, which I think Twitter is well suited for as a social media tool. And um, it's ongoing and engaging. I hope people will jump in and I will get into a little more of how you can do that in a, in a short time. So here's the science geek in me. I have to get this out there. And hopefully there are some people who will be interested into this. I'm fascinated with neuroscience. That's one of my specialty areas. I, I am not a science doer myself, but I um, somehow am good at interpreting it and translating technical science into information for other people to understand. And I found this in a blog, a science blog called Life Hacker, this quote that I found particularly resonant. And I hope um, you'll bear with me while I read it, which I know is, is not the rule in PowerPoint. You shouldn't do that. But here we go. If we listen to a PowerPoint presentation with boring bullet points, uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. A certain part in the brain gets activated. Scientists call this Broca's area and Wernicke's area. Overall, it hits our language processing parts in the brain where we decode words into meaning. And that's it. Nothing else happens. But when we're being told a story, things change dramatically. Not only are the language processing parts in our brain activated, but any other area in our brain that we would use when experiencing the events of the story are too. So reading a story, going to a movie, hopefully interacting on Twitter, that, that evidence is out, but maybe we can help establish it here. You actually put yourself into the story and it activates your whole brain in a different way than simply listening to facts. Um, so this is really turning brains on to learning in a big way, I think, and um, anxious to uh, experiment further and, and see how you feel about it too. So one more um, science-oriented slide. Um, this actually does not come from either Hollywood or from the science community, uh, per se. It's interesting, though. Stories exert a powerful influence on human thoughts and behavior. They consolidate memory, shape emotions, influence in-group or out-group distinctions, and may affect the fundamental contents of personal identity. It comes as no surprise that these influences make stories highly relevant to vexing societal challenges. So um, I don't know if anyone can would like to guess um, who's talking about science in this way. Um, but to me, it was fascinating to find out that it was actually the US Department of Defense and, and a, an agency called DARPA, which funded the internet, among other things, and, and is a very um, spawns innovation um, by investing through grants in research in areas uh, pretty far-ranging areas that DARPA is actually um, funding in funding uh, research now at, at the Uni um, University of Southern California, USC, in uh, the narratives, neurobiology of narratives. And so that is where the science is emerging, and there are very prominent neuroscientists who are leading that study. I'm following that anxiously to see how that really that evidence substantiates what we're trying to do with transmedia storytelling here and learning. So that going back to the story, my story of out of time, I was curious to know this to test this hypothesis, could there be actually a modern day Leonardo da Vinci? Um, Leonardo in his time was not uh, able to access the internet, obviously. In fact, books, 
the printing press had not even been developed. So books were very rare and expensive. And um, the world was a very different place then. And yet Leonardo, through his own exploration and discovery, was able to, uh, uh, to distinguish himself in so many areas from engineering to art to music to science to architecture. It was just um, quite phenomenal, An anatomy, uh, medicine. So Leonardo is kind of the, the epitome of what uh, the Renaissance genius is about. And of course, that's what our her heroine, Charlie, aspires to. So today, as opposed to back then, what, what would success look like for young people growing up, for teens growing up? In my mind, there are three things, um, three overarching goals uh, for education and learning, which I think are different things, frankly. Um, learning to think, inspiring to dream, and motivating to do. And those were the things that kind of uh, I had in the back of my mind while I was writing the screenplay. And um, uh, I think Charlie has emerged as a, as a person who is uh, passionate about all of those things. And I would hope that students today are also passionate about many of those things. So um, this is a little bit of what technology looked like in Leonardo's day, uh, quite different than today. He wrote uh, his codices in, in print with a pen <laughs> and in mirror writing and with lots of sketches in them. And that was how he recorded his scientific evidence and learning. And of course, this was the basis for many of his inventions and discoveries. Now, the interesting thing is that Charlie, for the school science fair, uses this codex, codex Leonardo's notebook, um, to find what she thinks are the plans for a machine but Leonardo would not have had the technology or the science to build it out in his time, but he did have that dream. And so her dream of his dream is to actually build it out. Um, and of course, as we know, Leonardo is very much alive and with us today because we see his Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, the sculptures, his innovations in the scientific method through observation. He's inspired cars, helicopters, tanks, weapons of all kind. Um, so da Vinci is everywhere, from suspense novels to museum exhibitions to television series. And um, it's no wonder that Charlie is curious. So can today's determined teen do it all? I just put up this framework very generally to look at learning then versus learning now. And learning now is a much more complicated process, as many of you probably know intimately and in much greater detail than I do. There's so many conflicts on teens' time, and there's so many bodies of information that they can draw from. Is it even possible for somebody to have a wide expanse of general information and be considered a genius, a renaissance, or universal genius, as I'll call them? today um, versus the amount of knowledge that was even available to anyone in their lifetime in the 15th century. Um, it's complicated. And that's the question that we began, I began with when writing Out of Time. And it's one I'm still exploring and that Charlie is pushing to the limit on Twitter today. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to share with others in a variety of other uh, platforms very soon. So. Who would say Leonardo be? That's where Charlie comes in. And who is she? She's 13. She's STEM smart. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math, which I'm sure most of you know. She's intensely <coughs> curious. Um, and a little bit unusual, even in our time, is that she's a girl who possesses all of these things. Because girls, um, as we know, it's a problem for girls who want to enter this as today. They're in greater number than ever before entering those fields, but there's still a lot of impediments and a lot of deterrence for girls to excel in those areas. So could Charlie inspire girls and boys of, you know, the early teens to embrace and get interested and curious about those fields? That's a question that remains open and one that I would hope on this platform with the website to be able to um, really encourage people to engage with.
Um, the middle school science fair was where she wanted to uh, test her hypothesis that Leonardo had in fact designed a time machine and that she in fact could bring it to life and so that's what um, is currently her preoccupation is designing actually creating this time machine from Leonardo's plans and there is a lot of problems to solve in getting there is time travel possible um, I see somebody mentioned Stephen Hawking's here so quantum physics is uh, very much investigating this right now and I'll uh, I'll talk amazing. a little bit about how Charlie is engaging with a conversation no idea, in quantum physics, or I has been idea, um, but, on Twitter. Uh, so it's her history is Leonardo, amazing. and she has a That's secret plan to actually not um, just build the time machine, but go down, it's, I'm really, it's, it's just uh, go a, down in history, back in history, idea. to to you try know, to so learn from her to her uh, idol in person. Uh, people from around the globe. Uh, so her destination is Renaissance Florence, and um, courtesy learning, of George you know, Stiller like, at my I reading map, uh, you know, like we now have a Google Earth plan you know, with big, Renaissance huge. Italy um, landmarks talk. in it. Um, this is one of them, um, you know, Basilica talk, of San Lorenzo. Would be of course, amazing Lorenzo de Medici <laughs> was the Duke of Florence at this time but and a patron of Leonardo's. Do, um, um, you know, this is available and it will be um, ultimately, Look, I hope, on the, the website. I tweeted, I just found, going to emerge this I afternoon you, um, I without this it's still in progress and you'll see, uh, uh, of being built see, out but a lot of lesson plans could be uh, developed around um, uh, a Google Earth amazing. project like just, this just and I hope that this but here's a more general it, look at what the Google Earth map looks like of Florence you know, itself and each of the people represents and I, pins I represents landmarks and time and people and events that happened where there is information. Um, I, I don't know what people are teaching about Renaissance Florence in middle school and high school, but I think it would be interesting to get a project together with kids to uh, use this as a teaching tool and then the great quizzes and games and uh, maybe a map of where's Charlie, where they have to find out where she is at any given time. So. Um, so, so here's that's just you know a little advanced teaser about some of my plans. Um, so the question is, where where is Charlie, and could she actually break the time barrier? Uh, would she do it in history that already happened, or history in an alternate universe? This is the question that came up on Twitter, and I can show you a little bit of that conversation momentarily. Okay, so here it is. Charlie has been busy tweeting, and people actually, followers, are tweeting back to her. And so she does ask that question, could I travel back to history that's already happened? And um, uh, someone who is a, a science, uh, a, a amateur science uh, physicist, yikes, says, uh, you, could, you would change history if you traveled back to a time that already occurred. So can tr consider traveling to an alternate universe. Well, she hadn't thought of that. And what does an alternate universe look like? And how do you get there? So a lot of these questions would be interesting for uh, science classes to investigate physics in, in the physics section. Um, again, I'm interested in ideas of how that might happen. So um, the other question is, uh, oh, and I might mention here that over the summer also Charlie was able to hear a lecture uh, in person by Brian Green, who's a noted physicist and cosmologist from Columbia University, who has a popular PBS series about multiple universes, which might be alternate universes, um, different physical properties wormholes and all of that, he really is able to popularize uh, very difficult quantum science in ways that help people understand it. And, and so Charlie glommed on to that and asked a lot of questions on Twitter for the, that presentation. So um, a lot of food for thought there. Then the question rises, um, how would you even make this possible and so here's a little short video that um, perhaps uh, you can play Nellie that talks about how 
interactive storytelling works. Wait until you meet Charlie Morton. She's just your average, everyday 13-year-old science genius. Be amazing. And there was a question here about twitting. Are teenagers twitting? Because She's I know mine, but my students, all things I Leonardo da Vinci. My students don't. They, they, they're also more on Facebook. They don't even know what curious. Twitter is. In fact, her so curiosity cool. often gets her into trouble. In her quest to prove to everyone that she is a modern day incarnation of the Renaissance genius Leonardo. She's conquered pre-calculus, played an original violin composition at the Kennedy Center with her concert violinist mother, captained her travel soccer team to victory, and is now set to master the greatest feat of modern physics, time travel. Da Vinci's notebooks offer a clue. Designs for a time machine. While Leonardo had neither the science knowledge nor the technology in 15th century Florence to build it, Charlie today does. To accomplish this bit of invention, she enlists the help of her friend and 8th grade science geek Billy Vincenzo to harness the neutrino, outrun the Higgs boson, and send her back 500 years across seven time zones to meet her Florentine idol. Her destination? The de' Medici Palace in 1492. Disguised for the masquerade ball at carnival time. Can she make it there and still have the juice for her return trip with just a solar battery, iPad, cell phone, a oh, Facebook, and energy bars for fuel? Can she put together the tools to make her dream come true? Can Leonardo give her answers, or will she be Da Vinci's teacher? And once there, where will she find Italy's best spaghetti pomodoro, her favorite food in the universe? Hey there, I'm Robin. I've written Charlie's story as a film script, Out of Time. Charlie and her friends debut in this time travel adventure where a wrinkle in time meets the Da Vinci Code. I, I got, that's they what I know to their do. destiny. I'm adding a link screen. to uh, and the rest chat, is history. Um, or is where it? we can continue this conversation. While they're waiting to be the discovered, place, they've can, emerged with, in a parallel I Twitterverse at Out of Time that, Movie. Uh, Twitter is, um, Just as Dickens debuted his Pickwick papers short, in the Daily Newspaper, like. and soap and, operas um, showed up daily as stories on the small screen. The serial uh, you know, story kind of, of Charlie and Friends is now Twitter. unfolding in More digital space on, Facebook, on Twitter Facebook at Out of Time Movie. I don't know what it is exactly. Because it, it Twitter works your best when others get engaged um, in the action, kind of our back. cast of characters needs you to help advance this experiment in tweet yeah. storytelling. Already, followers are jumping in to advance the time travel adventure. At Dr. Maypole is consulting with Charlie about whether time travel might cause motion sickness. An acupressure earband, he says, would do the trick. But Charlie's mom says she's too young for pierced ears. A rocket scientist cautions that jumping back to a past that's already happened could change history. But what about a parallel universe? A Twitter magician has convinced our girl that it is no sleight of hand that a modern man would appear in an authentic photo published in 1917. Oh, is that Charlie's face in The Last Supper? Can she make it back in time to win the middle school science fair? You decide. All it takes is a follow at Out of Time Movie and a 140 character clue just Tweet us. Meanwhile, here are five simple story rules for driving Twitter action. Number one, tweet as yourself. 
Number Amazing. Two, I'm just amazed. It, it's wonderful. I'm clapping. Three. It's historical. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Robin. Tell I hope that we'll hear from you. Uh, four. Maybe. We only uh, develop one storyline at a time. Um, past, present, I'll try to get future. you to come back. We'll jump into because, new uh, adventures when the time This is just the beginning. Right. We have to hear and more. And finally, five. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Activity. And we'll Please look for the movie, I guess, also. Consider actions, interactions, and dialogue suited to the time and place. Check out the whole story, from carpools to time travel, on the Pass the Talking Stick blog at this URL. And meanwhile, jump in, join the fun. Excellent, Ask our excellent. Your see, kids must be smell, so proud taste, of their mom. Feel, <laughs> Sorry, I just had to say that. We're about to change I can history. imagine them rooting uh, for you. Thank you, thank you so much, everyone, for joining, and thank you, Robin, uh, for giving us uh, so much. Yeah, I've added the links to the chat box. By the way, everyone, you can copy the chat. Just click on, it says copy chat. You can do the same, actually, uh, Robin. Copy so chat, that's a little bit about out of time, you'll get, the movie, you'll get the Twitter story. Um, and um, I'm actively yeah, recruiting so tweets. People who uh, want to engage regularly yes, with Charlie definitely. and her friends on Twitter. Up, yeah, you so if you have an interest up. in doing that, and I'll okay, talk about so a little bit more about that, that in a second, um, I hope you'll email me at robin at outoftimemedia, outoftimemedia.com. Thank you. So, thank you so much um, for coming, and thank you to Robin. That was um, absolutely You amazing. can see that the world in 1492 might be a very different more, place more, than today, um, and uh, yeah, maybe it's, it's, someone tr even you. as smart as Charlie wouldn't think and her friends would not think through the dangers that could befall a teen traveling uh, to a past where uh, she would